Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips, and today we have such exciting news and a lot to talk about. First of all, I want to welcome all of our Let's Go family members. It is wonderful to have you all here with us, and a big welcome to everyone who is new. We are really glad that you found us, and indeed we have been waiting for you and are so glad to have you. If anyone hasn't subscribed yet, please subscribe to our channel. It'll make you part of the Let's Go family and all of the exciting things that are going on right now and everything in the future you will get to be a part of and we really need you so thank you so much so today we have the really exciting news that testing is no longer required to fly into the United States it is so exciting that goes into effect on midnight on June 12th um, just this Sunday and I think that they mean for it to start like at 12:01 a.m. on Sunday so in in um, all reality that means that Gordon and I shouldn't have to do any testing as we are planning to fly home from Barcelona on Sunday. But um, I think that we're going to go ahead and do it because we are checking in really early. Our flight goes around 9 o'clock on um, Sunday morning and so we'll be checking in really early especially as you do when you are somewhere in a foreign country for your flight home. And we're a little bit, I just want to make sure that everyone knows how the procedure is supposed to go and someone doesn't tell us that we missed doing our testing. So we're going to do that. And along with that announcement is this huge thank you to all of you. So many of you sent us emails, um, commented on our Facebook group, I saw one, and also on just comments on our videos. Thank you so much. We have not been keeping up with the news at all while we've been on our vacation because we've really tried to make it a vacation. And so I appreciate all of you so very much. And once you said it, then we looked and could see that it was all over the news. And this is just really exciting. And one thing that makes me really happy about it is it takes away this huge stress because so many of us have been worried about how we are going to test to get home. And especially since the cruise lanes don't offer that testing, we've been worried about how to get testing at the airport or taking our EMED test with us, whatever, and now we don't even have to worry about that. So I think that is wonderful news. Another component that I think that goes with this is I think it's going to make it a lot easier for people who actually do test positive for COVID to be able to get home because, as you know, I did that video before we came about kind of what my thoughts were about what we were going to do if we tested positive on this cruise and really it's the hand of the Lord and we count it as a huge blessing. We both still feel great and have no reason to think that we have COVID. However, if anybody does test positive, then you have to wait the certain number of days and then you have to try to get a certificate of recovery in order to put with that positive test to be able to fly back into the US. And so that is another huge worry that is now gone. I have not heard if they have mo removed the requirement for that little attestation that the CDC requires as you fly into the United States. And I wanted to let you know that as you know, if you've been following along at all, we are going to be flying home on American Airlines. And they sent us an email this morning both Gordon and I got it, and it um, just literally has the form. You click that you're going to do it on the email, and then you just put in some really basic information and submit it, and then that form is taken care of. So now we are all ready to go home with that. I don't even have to worry about it. I brought the paper forms with us just in case, but we don't need those because American Airlines had their own form and it's it's we've submitted it now. And so I would like to hear from some of those of you who have flown home from another country to the United States on a different airline so that maybe we can let all of our Let's Go family members know how that works on different airlines. I would hope that it works just as well on all the other airlines. Um, I mentioned to you all that Delta has their own Fly Ready um, website. They don't have an app for it yet, but and I don't know if they'll ever um, end up needing to do that, but when we were flying out of the United States to Italy, uh, that um, they did not have it set up well enough for us to enter all of our information in. We just had to show everything at the airport. And just know that when you fly somewhere, they are out of the United States that requires um, any proof of vaccination. You are going to have to show your passport and your vaccination cards. So have those with you at the airport. And they did want to see the originals. They didn't want to see a copy. So be aware of that. Another really important thing I think that goes along with this is it eases so much of the trouble with worrying about the transfers up there in Vancouver. 
isn't this wonderful? It really relieves a huge stress on that. So if you're someone that is going to be sailing into or out of Vancouver, worrying about your flights home, now you can just fly in and out of Vancouver and not even worry about that extra testing. So I think that's wonderful. I um, have not heard, though, that Canada has removed their requirement. Canada sometimes does random COVID testing as you fly into Canada or as you cross the border into Canada. So just be aware that I think that that requirement still stands because that is required by Canada, not by the United States. But honestly, I have not heard a lot of people telling us that that has happened to them. If it has happened to you, let us know how it went and how they handled that. So just the best news. I am really excited about this. So the next thing that I wanted to make sure that everybody knows about, and it kind of goes along with that, is the, the booster situation. Now, after I did my video yesterday of the updates that Princess and um, Norwegian is talking about for their boosters and everything that was in that, I've had a few people ask me exactly where boosters are required. So first of all, if you are new around here and you haven't been cruising yet, on all of the major cruise lines, you have to be vaccinated or you have to have an exemption. That is just your basic vaccine. The first vaccines that you would have um, received as a COVID vaccine. For boosters, they everyone is just talking about the first booster. Princess, Holland America, all the others have gone out of their way to say that second boosters are not a thing yet. Nobody is worried about a second booster. But for the cruises that you, the Princess and Holland America, Royal Caribbean and Celebrity are doing, if you are sailing out of the United Kingdom or uh, anywhere in Europe, you need to have your booster if it has been more than nine months since you received the last dose of your original COVID vaccine. That's what's required. If you don't have that booster, you need to have an exemption. Now, yesterday in their update, Nor Norwegian talked about the fact that if you are sailing in Northern Europe or the Baltic, you don't need to have a booster there. I don't exactly know why there is a difference in what is required with different cruise lines. I know that the booster requirement is, it has to do with the EU. The cruise lines themselves didn't make that up. It is the EU that requires that passengers, if their vaccine is over, you know, the 270 days or nine months, that you have your booster. So if it was me, I would go ahead and have my booster if I was sailing anywhere over here especially, because you never know when the requirements are going to change or if there's going to be a port that isn't going to let you off that requires the booster if your vaccine's over um, nine months old. If, does that make sense to everyone? If you've got any questions about that, just put it in the comments. Let's see, I've had questions about embarkation times and debarkation times. Embarkation times on Princess shows up in your app eventually. We have never had it so that we really could select ours. Ours just pops up. Now we have cruised with Princess several times and so just be aware that I think it will eventually give you either let you select them or it's just going to assign you. But when it comes to debarkation times, you know, when you get off at the end of your cruise, we have never have been able to select those in the app. The way that it has worked for us, it is it, it has just been assigned once we have gotten on board the ship. For all of the cruises that we have done since the restart, which were to Alaska, the Mexican Riviera, and the Caribbean, those, every time we got on board, it was already assigned, and if we wanted to change it a little bit, we could, uh, if you ever get your debarkation time assigned to you, and you want a different time, all you have to do is go down to guest services and they'll change you. So on this cruise though, since we are flying home the day after, they gave us the form, just had our steward bring it to our stateroom, and then we filled it out saying what time we wanted to get off of the ship. And so be aware that you can always select what time you want off. So we submitted it and they assigned us a time, which works really great with us. Since we are just going to go to our hotel in Barcelona, drop off our stuff, and then go out and start our sightseeing, we were happy with an early time. They assigned us, I think 8.15 is when we get off, but they told us that we could also get off earlier. And I have had the experience of just getting off earlier. They don't really care. They're just trying to make it so that everyone doesn't want off at the same time. When they talk about keeping your luggage with you, it means that you keep your luggage with you instead of putting it out. Now we have to have any luggage 
that we want Princess to take care of and that we don't want to ourselves take from our stateroom out to, um, to disembark, we have to have it outside our door by 10 o'clock this evening. So we're going to do that and then we're just going to keep with you, to keep with us the bags that we need to put what we need this evening. And then in the morning, as you disembark, you just go through and pick up your luggage and then take it with you and grab a cab. That's what we're going to do. But whenever you hear the words, keep your luggage with you, it means you're not going to have Princess handling any of it. It works really smooth that they just yeah put it out there by 10 o'clock and they come and get it at some point in the evening with a disembarkation time that they've assigned us of 8:15. I just wanted to show you really quick they give you these luggage tags and you just put one of these on every piece of luggage that you put out in the hall and they kind of color code it and number code it by what time so it makes it really handy. You put this on each piece of luggage that you put out there and then in the morning when you disembark and you're going through the terminal area and getting your luggage back, they have the pieces of luggage sorted by color and then you just go find it. It is really easy to do. We ha Luckily we have never lost luggage this way. It is always very neatly done. A couple of times they've had the colors mixed up though, some luggage in the wrong color. So if, like in the morning, if we go to blue and we search and search and can't find our luggage, I won't be panicking. I'll, we'll just start looking through other colors <laughs> and find it that way. The other thing that they give you is just a nice page with the disembarkation information. And then on the back, so like they gave us these blue with five on it. So we just look up and find Navy five. It says independent arrangement group five. We're supposed to go to the concerto dining room and be there by 815 to disembark. But it goes through all of the different colors where you're supposed to go wait. And then they just simply call you when they are ready for your group to disembark and off you go. It works super smoothly. So I wanted to let you know. And then usually what they have you do is in Barcelona, um, it's been, you know, since before COVID 2019 since I've been there, but you go through customs at the same time. You get your luggage and then you go through customs. So we'll show you in the morning how that works. The next item that we need to talk about is, um, Who's it the island princess? Thank you. Alrighty, now I have not been getting as many updates on what's going on on other ships the last few days, so I would really love to hear from all of you who are on a cruise or who just got home or have been on a cruise recently so that we can all have an idea of what's going on on the different cruise ships. Um, several people are asking about the Enchanted, so if any of you are on the Enchanted Princess, we would love to hear from you or if you've recently been. I know that right now Alaska and Europe are really big, but you know what, the Caribbean is big all the time. And so I know that there is a lot going on and so I would really like to hear about it so that we can share it with everyone. I did hear from someone who is on the Island Princess right now and they're elite with uh, Princess and they just are not quite having the time of their life. They mentioned that um, things that it is the worst princess cruise they've taken. They aren't getting, They she said that they don't have the things that they usually enjoy doing, that there is no scavenger hunt, they don't turn down your bed at night, and I know that you have to request that, but they don't put a chocolate on your pillow, apparently it turned down, we haven't requested turn down, so I don't know if they put a chocolate on your pillow when they do turn it down. But then they also talked about the um, pub lunch. So it used to be that when we were on a cruise, there would be like usually on a sea day, they would offer free fish and chips over at the Crown Grill, but they have not, or we haven't seen that for a long time. They, um, I'm trying to remember if they even, do you remember if they had it at the, on the uh, Coral Princess when we went to Antarctica? I'm not remembering that, but maybe they did. But I know that it's been a little bit hit or miss and we haven't seen it since the restart. So the other thing that I, and that laundry is taking a really long time on the Island Princess. And then another Let's Go family member let us know that there is a lot of COVID and people are quarantined on the ship. 
We have asked how many people are uh, quarantined here on the Regal Princess and the customer service. They just acknowledge that there is some COVID, but our ship is so busy, you guys. It is really, really packed. I would say they have said that there's about 3,500 passengers on board and 100% capacity is 3,600. And when you go to the pool, you go everywhere. It is really busy again. It's like the old days before COVID. It is so busy. So honestly, we have been staying in our cabin a little bit more and have having a great time just because um, I don't want to I don't want to get COVID I want to do anything I can to mitigate that a chance of that but it is it's great though to see it busy again I know that it's good for princess to have it busy again so they can start making money again and maybe we'll have better food again and just all of the things that everyone's hoping that they can restart again so I would say on the island princess just be aware of what is going on and know that hopefully brighter days are ahead I have felt like lately I keep telling you so many times what is wrong on these cruise ships, but you know what? I know that there is a lot of right going on as well. I had a Let's Go family member, and this is the other thing I want us to talk about in the comments. Uh, Let's Go family member said, hey, is you know we keep hearing of people not being able to complete like their cruise tour, that they catch COVID at the... Um, at the lodges and then they're not able to go on the cruise portion because you have to be tested between the two and I would love to hear from any of you I know that we've got a lot of us out there who have been able to go on their go on the land portion of their tri trip and then get on the cruise ship and that everything has gone just fine so if you happen to be in that position would you mind putting a comment below it is really hard to have a feel for everything when all we hear about are the um, things that aren't going right and so in the comments I would love to hear what is going right for everyone and hear if you've been able to go on your um, land cruise tour and complete the whole thing so I think that's really important it is very important to know what's going wrong absolutely but I also want us to make sure that we talk about what is going really well on this ship I would say you know what everyone says this that goes on a princess cruise I would say number one the crew is amazing so amazing. Uh, the, last night, Gordon and I were talking as we're nearing the end of our cruise. We have had so many exceptional crew members. Just absolutely outstanding. There's one gal that really stands out. Every evening, she's the one, the hostess that seats you when you go to the main dining room. And she makes it so much fun. She is an absolute delight. Uh, Princess should be moving her up quickly. She is remarkable. She, we are going to talk about her in um, the, our survey, and um, we are really, really pleased. We've had so many amazing crew members here. The other thing is the ship is beautiful. It is truly beautiful. It is well taken care of. It is an absolutely beautiful ship. Every time our captain signs up, say, signs off, he'll just say, usually he says, on the marvelous Regal Princess, she is indeed marvelous. And another thing I love about Princess is every time you get on one of her ships, you feel like you are coming home. Now, I'm guessing that you feel that way on some of the other cruise lines as well. I'm really excited to um, start feeling that with other cruise lines. But Princess does a remarkable job with that. Some of it is because the ships are designed the same on some of their ships. But also, I think it is because of their outstanding crew and the way they handle things is so similar across the board that when you get on it doesn't matter if you're getting on a ship in Fort Lauderdale or Seattle or Buenos Aires or Rome it, you feel like you're coming home it is really really nice and in fact yesterday as we were getting back on the ship they um, you know they hand you a nice cold towel uh, you know wrapped up and cold and then cold water and one of the crew members who was handing him out said welcome home and it was just absolutely wonderful so that is one thing that we thoroughly enjoy I feel like they do give you a really good cruise experience here I know that as we have said the food is not quite what we have expected you know had before in the past and a few you know customer service as far as some things has really fallen off but I would say it has not fallen off on the onboard experience the only thing that is a little slow is um, trying to get a drink somewhere if you're at the bar but you know what they are working so hard they really are working hard they are super busy and so it's okay to wait for a few minutes but those are just some of the things that we really enjoy and every time we pull into a new port it is just thrilling so I would like all of you to tell us some of the things that you like best and what has been going really well on the cruises that you have been on recently if you are sailing on a line different than 
Princess, boy, would we love to hear from you too. Just share everything that you've got to share and we will all be happy to learn together and it will help all of us out to know what to expect. The other thing I wanted to let you know just about our flights is that American Airlines sent us an email just this afternoon. Today is Friday afternoon and they let us know that they are overbooked for our flight home and they are asking for volunteers that would be willing to stay and take flights back home, the same flights, on Wednesday or Thursday this next week. We are not going to do that because we both need to be to work on Monday, but I just wanted to let you know kind of how flights are looking and how everything is going and we'll keep you up to date on anything else we learn about that. So thank you all. Oh, and you know what? One other update. One of you, actually two of you, was so kind to ask about those North Pole cruises that are so exciting. So if you want to look at those itineraries, it's just U.S. period Ponant, P-O-N-A-N-T, period, dot com. Those cruises sail out of Longyear Bibin in Spitsbergen, Norway, and they are 16 days, and they look extraordinary. So you might want to just take a look at those if you would like to. That's where you look at them. Or if you want to send me an email, I can send you information on that from um, as a travel agent, and I would be happy to help you. So if you all appreciate these updates, would you please give this video a thumbs up? That'll really help us out, and I will be talking to you all really soon. You all take really good care. God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye.